All right, welcome to Stars and Galaxies Unit Day 2 of 4. Remember, you can pause this video anytime you like, go back, whatever helps you understand the material better. All right, the unit Stars and Galaxies. Today we're going to talk about light years and stars. Okay, Day 2 of 4. Objectives, you will understand the concept of a light year and how we use them to measure distances to stars and galaxies. Okay, you will understand how stars vary in their size, color, temperature, and brightness. Okay. All the stars in our night sky look the same, but they're really quite different, as we're going to find out. And you will learn how to classify stars on what is known as an HR diagram. Okay, quick right. Does light have a speed? If so, do you think it moves fast or slow? Okay, if you were traveling at the speed of light, how many times do you think you could go around the Earth in one second? If a star 10 light years away exploded today, how long would it take you to see it? What do you think? Okay, compared to other stars, do you think our sun is hot or cool star, large or a small star? Okay, here we go, light years. Okay, when astronomers first realized how far away stars actually are, it became apparent that a new unit of measurement would be needed to record their distances. Remember, stars in the night sky are much farther, much, much farther than the planets in our solar system. Okay, so we needed a un new unit of measurement to measure their distances. So stars are much far away than the planets in our solar system. Distances between stars are measured in light years, the distance light travels in a year. Well, light seems fairly instantaneous to us, but it's actually not. We can measure the speed, and it's very, very fast. Okay, a light year is the distance that light travels in a year. So if you're a car traveling at 60 miles an hour, well, how far would a car go in a year? Well, you could do the calculations, but if you're light, how far does light go in a year? Well, as it turns out, we use the light year to measure very distant objects such as stars and galaxies. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers a second, not a year, okay? So, or about 9 trillion 500 billion kilometers in a year. Remember, kilometers are like a mile, okay? A little shorter. So, you could just say 9.5 trillion kilometers in one year. That's very far. Nothing is faster than light, okay? If you travel at the speed of light, you would become light. So how fast is light? To give you an idea how fast light is, if you were moving at the speed of light, you would go around the equator of the Earth approximately seven and a half times in one second. So you would go around the Earth seven and a half times in one second if you were moving at the speed of light. So how long do you think it takes light to reach the Earth from the sun? Okay, well, it takes light eight minutes. Okay, so what are light years? Light years is, goes on your question section. Anything under the question goes in your answer section. Please read the passage. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Use these answer bank words at the top of your notes in the answer bank section. You should have six written down by the time you're done. Go ahead and hit pause, please, while you write. Okay, parallax. Parallax sounds kind of scientific y. All right, if scientific y is a word. So, how do we know the stars are farther away than the planets in our solar system? Well, the answer is we use something called parallax. It's a mathematical way we calculate the distance of stars. Okay, don't worry, you're not going to do too much math. The distance of a star is found by using parallax. We'll be doing a parallax lab here coming up. So, parallax is the apparent shift in the position of an object when viewed from two different positions, okay? When you say the word apparent, it doesn't mean it really happens, it just appears, okay? So think of the word apparent as it is the, it appears to shift, okay? So you can easily observe parallax yourself. You can hold your hand at arm's length straight out and look at the finger with your left eye and then with your right eye. Close one eye, okay, while closing one eye, look at it with your left eye and then look at it with your right eye, okay? You might notice your finger shifts, okay? What you will notice, like I just said, is that your finger appears to move slightly with respect to the background, okay? Now try the same experiment with your finger closer to your face. 
What do you observe? Okay, the closer an object is to the observer, the greater its parallax. Okay, we can measure parallax of relatively close stars in order to determine their distance from Earth. So, keep in mind here, look at, watch, this is what you see. So here's a nearby star we want to find the distance to. Okay, we look at it, and here's what it looks like in the night sky. Okay, now we go around later in the year, we look at that same star we're interested in. Now it appears over here in the night sky. Okay, what happened here? It moved. That is the shift. So parallax is the apparent shift. The star didn't really move. Notice the star is still right here. It just looks like it moved in the night sky. Okay, so it's the apparent shift of a star. It's parallax. We can measure that shift. The greater the shift, the closer the star. Okay. Now, a faraway star. Let's look at this star. Here's the star we're interested in, star two. We look at it in the night sky and there's where it is. We go around the sun in the winter time. We look at it again, six months later, and it shifted less, okay? So it didn't move as much. It has a shorter parallax shift. So it is a farther star. So that's how we know the distance to stars is by their parallax shift and how much that shift is, okay? So calculating parallax, all right? So notice, a nearby star has a great parallax shift, okay? Now, a far away star, it has a smaller parallax shift, okay? So on your notes, what is parallax? Everything under the question goes in the answer section, okay? Read the passage. Determine which word best completes the sentence by using the answer bank. Okay, go ahead and pause this slide, the video now while you write. All right, star characteristics. Here's where things get a little interesting if you ask me. All right, so there's a lot of different stars in our night sky. If you were to look at them with telescopes, you would notice that they, they vary or they change significantly. Well, there's these blue stars out there, and these blue stars are very hot and bright. You think blue, they must be cold, but it's not. Hot, blue stars are the hot stars, and they're really, really, really bright. Okay? And then most of the stars in the night sky, okay, or actually shouldn't say in the night sky, most of the stars in our galaxy are these red stars, and they are small, and they are cool and dim. Okay, so red stars are small, cool, and dim. Think of them as the opposite of a blue star. And then there's stars like our sun, which are kind of average in brightness and temperature. Okay, so it's kind of like Goldilocks star, right? It's not too hot, it's not too cool, it's just right. So yellow stars like our sun are average in brightness and temperature. Okay, so for your notes, okay, how are stars different in color, size, and temperature? Get this down, please. Use the answer bank to fill in the blanks. Okay, pause this video while you write. Okay, HR diagram. What the heck is an HR diagram? In the early 1900s, Ejnar Hertzsprung and Henry Russell found a way to classify stars by their temperature and brightness. So they looked at stars and they looked at their temperature and brightness. They looked at thousands of stars. They created a diagram that relates a star's temperature to its brightness. So magnitude here is a star's true brightness. Temperature over here is the temperature in Kelvin. For now, just think of it as degrees Celsius. Okay. So temperature in Kelvin in absolute magnitude. Brightness versus temperature. So they created a diagram that looks at a star's temperature to brightness. Okay. After looking at thousands of stars... Okay, when they looked at temperature and brightness, they noticed the large blue stars were way up here in the top left of the diagram. When they looked at temperature and brightness, they noticed that large red, or that small, that's just say small red stars are in the bottom right hand corner of the diagram. Okay, finally, when they plotted our sun like stars, they looked at all these stars, and some are like our sun. They are average. 
and they notice that they are about, oh, in the middle, because they're an average star. Okay. After analyzing thousands of stars, Hertzsprung and Russell were able to classify every type of star in the universe. So they looked at cool red dim stars and yellowish orange stars or even white stars, okay, and these blue massive stars. And they even looked at stars like giants, which we'll learn about later, and super giants, okay, and hot white dwarfs which we will learn about later as well. Okay, so what is the HR diagram? Please get this down in your notes. Use the answer bank to fill in the blanks, please. Go ahead and pause this while you write. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about today are main sequence stars. What the heck are main sequence stars? Well, our sun is a main sequence stars. It's in the prime of its life. Okay. Stars spend most of their life in the main sequence phase, as we're going to learn. Main sequence stars that fit into a diagonal band that run from the upper left corner okay, to the bottom right-hand corner. So it's this diagonal band of stars. Okay, That's the main sequence stars. So down here from the cool red stars up to the really hot blue stars. So main sequence stars contain large hot blue stars as well as small red stars. 90% of all stars in the night sky that you see in the night sky are main sequence stars. Okay. So the last one for today is what are main sequence stars? Okay. You should be on word bank number six. Okay. Go ahead and write this down. Please pause this video now. Okay. Summarize, please. Once again, you can always do your own or you can do mine. Either way is fine. Okay? Either one is fine. Go ahead and pause this while you finish your summary for 20 points. Okay? Good work. You are all finished and we'll see you tomorrow.